Hello guys, welcome back to our next lecture of our Bob Craft series. So in the last videos, we have seen the basic thing, the basic traversal and everything, BFS, DFS. Now comes the interesting applications of everything, which means you will see cycle and inductor graph, cycle and inductor graph, bipartite graph, topological sort, and so many algorithms are coming up now. So starting with the first one to detect the cycle in an undirected graph undirected graph you know which has both the directions which means from node u to you can go to node v and also from v you can go to node u cycle we have taught in our second lecture of our this series if you have not watched it watch it but still i'm gonna show you okay what's a cycle but if you want to practice you have these questions you can just practice them you will actually see okay how to find the cycle in an inductive graph firstly cycle as we have told in the last or in the lecture two of this video also that a cycle is defined as a path i will not tell what the path is because we have told everything in that video it's just a recap of what it is which has no repeating edges or vertices except the first and last vertex which means if i'm starting from here i go 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 and come back so now it is a path because it is we started from a node and we reached to that node again so it's a cycle now let's look okay what's the problem like we will be having vertices we will be having edges okay i have five vertices five edges we will be given the graph in the form of an adjacency list if you don't know what's adjacency list like again go and watch the previous videos we have told okay graph can be represented in four ways in four out of that we mostly use the way as adjacency list and that is what it is written zero it points to one one has a list of two three uh, one has a list of zero two and four two has a list of one and three three has a list of two and four four has a list of one and three which is represented like this cool now we have to tell okay is there a cycle in this graph or not and we can clearly see there is a cycle if you start from here and go 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 and come back okay you can see it is a cycle you can visually also see okay it looks like a cycle right if we just choose a graph it looks like a cycle now whatsoever we have seen so far we have what we have seen we have seen the traversal algorithms which means graph traversal algorithms which are bfs and dfs so can you think of any way that you can just use these traversal algorithms and can find a cycle in the graph see what it is easily means Traverse algorithm, which means traversing the graph. When we traverse the graph, okay, uh, and we come back to a node, it's a cycle. So why not just traverse a graph, traverse, 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 and if you come back to a node which was already traversed, it is a cycle. As simple as that. Now, as we can traverse by both BFS and TFS, we can use both of them. It's just that if we have visited a node and we are again visiting that node it's a cycle as simple as that now uh, as we have already seen that okay if we can apply both pfs and tfs then we look okay is there anything which specifically pfs can do if it, it is it cannot then we simply use a tfs why it's very short and very fast to write the code is very short and fast to write and it's very simple right you just start from a node you just go 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 as soon as you visit the node again you just say okay it's a it's a it's a cycle let's see how so basically as usual i start from the node let's say i start from the node zero then i'll just go on to the next node in a standard efs driver so what happens you start from a node you go on to the next node okay i just go on to the next node i go from zero to one because in the adjacency list, I see, okay, what is the next node I have to go? What is my next neighbor? What is my next ch child I have to go to? Okay, as soon as I am at one, I think of, okay, what's the next node I can go? My adjacency list will say, okay, you can go to zero, two, and four. But zero was my parent itself and it was already visited. So I will not go that to zero. But eight minute, eight minute. Aryan, earlier you said that any node which is visited, if you again go to the, that node, then you will say, oh, oh, it's a cycle. But I can easily see that from one, I can move to zero also. But it, was, it is not a cycle. I will say, yeah, you are right. Which means, 
by simply saying that I just go on to a visited node, it's it will not be a cycle. There should be one more condition. If I am coming back from zero to one, if I'm coming from zero to one, and then from one I have to go further to some location, then I need to check. Okay, I should not see my parent. I should not look at my parent. I should only look at my next child's i should not look at my parent because you can easily see you can't look at zero when you are standing at one because it's your parent right parent parent that's the reason you can't look at your parent cool so for one i look i will not look at zero i look at two because it is not visited cool i just visit two then from two i have again two options three and one but one is my parent i can't look at it okay i'll just look at three it's not visited i will visit it okay i will visit three at three i'll just again see and go two and four other options two is my parent okay no worries go on to four four again i have a look oh four then i have three options i i have again two options three and one three is my parent sorry i i can't look at it but one i need to visit one but one was already visited and it is not my parent oh i found a cycle you saw what happened i will just do a standard efs traversal as soon as i am going on to visit the next node i will see if it is not visited then no worries visit it if it is not visited just visit it if i am going to visit it and it's actually already visited and also it's not my parent then i say oh I have found a cycle. That is the only thing which you have to do. Right. Let's see the next example. You will have, you can also see it's a graph. It's a one graph, but this graph can also have two components, right? So it's very much required that you go on to every component of the graph, which means you traverse every node, which means I will just do the EFS from the node right here. And also from the node right here, because I actually have to go to entire graph and you will see it, it will just go to zero. Cool. It will just go to one. After that, it will go to two. After that, it will, it will go to three. But as you can see, it is not going back to one. So it's not a cycle. But you saw what happened. It's just to show you that you have to traverse on the entire graph and graph can be split into multiple components. So you have to go on to every node of the graph to check. Okay, if it is, it has been considered to do the EFS traversal or not. Let's see the code pretty quickly. Firstly, make sure please mark this code as a snippet i have also marked my this code as snippet whatsoever codes i'm going to show you now from this lecture onwards please 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 see you can just copy paste this code both of c++ and java exactly the same exactly the same it's just that instead of my uh, vector of in like vector array of vectors i just use the array of array list you can use anything you can just modify the code according to you also but it is the most concise short sweet simple code i have written for you guys both same it's exactly the same for e plus plus and java but just a quick request just mark it as a snippet so that you can just use in the programming context very quickly right now let's go on to the code firstly as i told you our graph can be split into multiple components so i have to go on to every node of the graph and do the EFS traversal from every node. Provided that node is not visited for traversal because at every traversal, I just visit the node. Let's say I traverse zero, I, I just visited. I just traverse one, I visited traverse one, I visit two also, traverse one, I visit three also. Next time when I'm going to on to two for the traversal, it will just say, okay, two is already visited. So please don't start my traversal from two. That's the reason if it is not visited, I'll just start my traversal. Traversal will actually return me true or false depending upon if the cycle is there in the undirected graph or not. For the cycle, I just remember one thing in general also for this simple EFS traversal, I just need node at what node I am at. I just need visited, right? I need my graph. It is what I need for my standard EFS traversal. For the cycle, I just need one more thing, which is my parent because I need to make sure if I'm visiting a node, I don't have to look at my parent because my parent is very good. I have to look at other nodes which are not my parent. That's the reason I have to also mark my parent. Initially for the node zero, I have no parent as you saw here for the node zero, I have no parent. So I just thought, okay, it's parent. Let's say one, like minus one because for the next node onwards, 
it will be the root itself. Thus, I'll just mark my parent as for now minus one, and also the node which is I start from the zero node because like it will just go on from zero to v, which is the vertices in this graph. And you can submit this code in GFG link is above, or you can just write uh, it exactly in a letter graph practice GFG. Uh, now. As we go on to okay to actually find the cycle in that component, we will firstly a standard TFS traversal says just firstly visit that node and then go on to the child of that node. That's the reason I just do. It's a standard traversal, TFS traversal. Now as I go on to the child, I just check okay if the child is not visited, which means simply I can visit that child. Okay, cool, visit that child. But if the child is visited. And also it is not my parent who I have found a cycle. If the child is visited, which means in this case, my child of four was one and it was actually also also visited. And it was not my parent. That's the reason I just said, okay, return a true else. If both of them is not there, which means I return a false. You will see if my visited is false, which means I'm going on to my next child, next child, next child. I'm going on to my next child, next child, next child, next child. And if maybe anyhow, I just find the cycle in that, which means that cycle returns a true. So for sure. I should also return a true. That's the reason I just added this condition. When I go on to my child, which was actually will not visit it, just need to make sure that internally in that maybe there is some cycle. So I should need to return a true, which means that okay, if I have a graph something like this, I'm going on, 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 going on. Now, okay, I just get a cycle here. So you should also return a true, return a true, so that it can ultimately return a true. That's the reason I just have this condition. Okay. If there's internally a cycle, then also still return me a true. The complexity is pretty simple as we are going on to every node and add edge exactly once. Every node exactly once because it's visited. Edge also once because as soon as I go back via some edge or the other that I visit the same node again, I'll just declare, okay, it's a cycle, just move back. You have found cycle, you are very good. Space is nothing but O of V, which is the number of nodes, because you are just going on and visiting every node exactly once. That is all. C++ Java code is down below. I hope that you guys liked it. If yes, then do the like button. It helps me motivates a lot, a lot. And see you in the Goodbye, take care.